All right, today we're going to begin to talk about the electric field. Okay, what we're going to do is define it in terms of the force on the test charge, calculate the electric field from a single point charge, find the magnitude and direction from multiple charges, find the magnitude of a charge placed in a field, interpret a field diagram, and analyze the motion of a particle in a field. It's really not that bad, and, and, and in fact, we'll probably take care of those two in examples tomorrow in class. But in general, we're just talking about the electric field today. Now, the electric field at its simplest is the force per unit charge in space. Uh, and it's it's close to it's kind of like gravity the acceleration due to gravity which was force per unit mass it's kind of like the acceleration due to gravity but I don't I don't really like that um, I like saying it's it's how electrical charges change space It's what the electric field does to space, to the space around it. So, um, the guy who came up with this was Michael Faraday. He said the electric field work was in invisible lines of force emanating from charges, telling other charges how to behave when it's around it. Um, for us, let's say we have a, a charge of positive Q right here. What we want to do is see how that changes, how that changes the field, um, how that changes the space around it at this distance, a location of r away. Now, the way we do that is by using a teeny, tiny test charge. We're going to make it positive because we have to do, we have to make it something, and we look at how that charge, that test charge, reacts to our big charge. Well, that test charge has a tiny force on it that pushes it away. But we don't, we want to look at just the empty space here, not as if there was an actual charge there. So what we're going to do is take that and divide it by our tiny little positive Q. So we're taking K, Q, my big charge, there's my little charge, divided by R squared, and we're dividing it by the little charge. So this electric field that we get kq over r squared. So what this tells me is the electric field from a charge big Q to Q when we're a distance of r away. That's what I used that formula for. This one if a charge Q has an electric force acting on it, that's going to tell me that's going to tell me how big the electric field that it's in. We'll use this a little bit later. We're going to spend a lot of time with this one. Now, another way that we're going to look at this, this idea of a test charge, if, if we bring that to multiple points around it, we'll get multiple ideas uh, of how a little positive charge would act because of this big positive charge. Now, if we were to make a lot of those little test charges and look at a lot of little test forces, we'd see something like this. This is the force, the direction at least, of the force acting on that test charge as I move it around to a lot of different places because of these two things. Now. Looking at this, I can tell that my little positive charge wants to go towards this object. So that one's probably negative. And that my little positive test charge is being pushed away from this object. It's probably positive. Now it's a pain to draw these diagrams all the time. So what we're going to do is more or less um, connect these arrows. We have one line drawn to here. 
these things that we're drawing now are called electric field lines. And what they do is represent the shape of the electric field out in space. And the density of these electric field lines, how close they are together, tells me how strong my electric field is. There are a whole bunch of electric field lines very close to this charge, and they're very close together. There, the electric field is the strongest. Out here, I'm getting electric field lines that are more spaced apart. So the further away I move from these charges, the weaker my electric field gets. Now, there are some rules for these electric field lines. One, they point towards positive charges. Sorry, they point towards negative charges. and away from positive charges. If that makes sense. Our little test charge that we used to draw this electric field was a tiny positive test charge. Of course it's going to point towards negative and away from positive. Two, um, they never cross. Three, they begin at a positive charge and they end at a negative charge or an infinitely long distance away from our charge. More lines come off of a bigger charge. Lines closer together means I have a bigger electric field. So getting the electric field from single charges is easy. When I say easy, I mean very, very easy. Uh, let's say that we have a charge of plus four nanocoulombs located here. And I want to know, located two meters away, what the electric field is at this point P. This is as simple as we can do this. The electric field is equal to K times Q over R squared. And this is the electric field from a charge Q, that's the four nanocoulombs, a distance of R two meters away. Well, that's nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times four, it's a nanocoulomb, you gotta remember, times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs, coulomb squared, divided by two meters squared. Now, just looking at our units, coulomb goes away here, coulomb goes away there, meter goes away here, meter goes away here. So when we do this, okay, and then times 10 to the ninth goes away, 2 squared is 4, we get 9 newtons per coulomb. That's my electric field at that point. And the electric field is a vector, so it points in the positive x direction. You could just draw an arrow saying it points away from that charge. This is the easiest possible thing we could do with the electric field. Calculate the electric field at a single point from a positive charge. Now, if I were to double my distance, the electric field would get weaker. If I were to get closer, the electric field would get stronger. If this were a negative charge, it would reverse the direction of the electric field. But that's all we have to do when we're looking at the electric field from single charges. Multiple charges gets a little bit trickier. Here we have a positive charge and a negative charge. Okay, this is the origin, zero, uh, zero. This is one zero. And C should be, uh, that's two zero. C should be three zero. Okay, what we're going to do is look at the electric field first 
at point A. So we'll make this one red. From charge 1, I have an electric field that points this way. That's electric field 1. We'll make, we'll make this one blue. From charge 2, since that's a negative charge, the electric field points towards it. That's electric field 2. So my total electric field at A is going to be the vector sum of those two things. Doesn't matter that this comes from a negative charge, it's pointing in my positive direction. It's going to be E2 minus E1 because they're in opposite directions. Those electric fields are not adding together. So that's going to be the electric field from charge 2. So K times 2 nanocoulombs divided by, and we are 1, 2, 3 meters away from charge 2, 3 squared minus K times, and here is positive 2 nanocoulombs, and we are 1 meter away. So that is 9 times 10 to the 9th times 2 times 10 to the negative 9th. That's just 18 divided by 9 minus 18 divided by 1. Two, 2 minus 18. That gives me an electric field of negative 16 newtons per meter. Which means overall the electric field at point A points in this direction with a magnitude of 16 newtons per meter. That's at A. Oh, wrong thing. So let's look at the electric field Let's look at the electric field at point, um, at point B. So at point B, because of charge 1, it's positive. The electric field points away. E1 is now that way. And because of charge 2, which is negative, the electric field points towards it. E2. My total electric field at point B, then, would be E1 plus E2. In that case, they're both pointing in the same direction. It is K times 2 nanocoulombs, that's E1, divided by 1 meter squared, plus K times 2 nanocoulombs, that's Q2, divided by 1 meter squared. That gives me an electric field at B of 9 times 10 to the 9th times 2, 18 divided by 1 squared, 36 newtons per coulomb. So at point B, we've got 36 newtons per coulomb in that direction. Oh, it's the wrong thing again. I'll let you find the electric field at point C on your own. There's some symmetry there, so it'll be pretty easy. And if you're just dying to know, it's going to be 16 newtons per coulomb. But since it's closer to this force, that force is going to win. Now, as a more complicated example and something that the AP test m will more likely throw at you, um, we're going to have to deal with the electric field at a point that's not on axis. So we're going to have to do some vector addition. Because this is a positive particle, the electric field points away from it, and be E1. And that's a positive particle, the electric field points away from it, that'd be E2.
Now, in order to do this, to get the total electric field at point P, we need to do the vector sum of these. Ooh. So we need to find out this angle, because it's the same as that angle. And we need to find out this distance. Well, that distance r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So we're going to have to use that in our answer. And I know that the x component of e1, oh, sorry, and the x component of e2 cancel each other out. So what I, what I really want is my y component of E1 and my y component of E2. E1 in the y is E1 times the sine of that angle. Well, if, if this side is A, this side is B, and that side is R, sine E1 is going to be B over R, or E1 times B over A squared plus B squared, all of the one half. That's what E1 is. E2 is the same thing. It's just pointing in the opposite direction. So, I have to add both of those together. My total electric field would be E2 in the y plus E1 in the y direction, which would be E2 in the y is k times q over r squared times the sine of theta plus E1 in the y, k times q over r squared times, again, the sine of the angle. So I've got 2kq times b, right, from this, over a squared plus b squared to the 3 halves. I, I did that wrong. I circled it wrong. So to write that back in, a squared plus b squared to the 3 halves. Now I'll let you figure that part out on your own. This is a quick look at the electric field. We're going to spend tomorrow taking some time with it.